Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 317. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because we are going to expand your universe. Most importantly, your audience. Even better than that, we're going to help you go out there and become bigger, better, better investors and business owners by talking about something that is, it's kind of actually meta, if you will. It's a little weird. We're going to talk about something that we've never talked about before on the show, but it's another way of going out there and building a business. And I think you're going to learn a lot of lessons from today's guest. Why? Because he's got a lot of lessons to teach you because here's what I know about him. He currently is the undisputed king of podcasting. What does that mean? A million downloads, a thousand shows, co-host eight shows. He has a print paid newsletter in nine different countries. That's code for this isn't his first rodeo. And he knows what he's talking about when it comes to podcasting. If you've wondered yourself, can I make a business doing this? Well, today's guest is here to show you exactly that. Help me welcome none other than Mr. Jonathan Rivera. Jonathan, how you doing? Jay, I'm surprised that you stayed serious in that intro. Thank you. <laughs> well, I almost did the let's get ready to run, but you know, that wouldn't that that wet really wouldn't work out. But that's you okay. held it together nicely, man. And I'm I'm glad to be here. And the thing is, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but my background, the way I got free from my shackles of a nine to five job mm -hmm. was through real estate investing. And so cash flow is near and yeah. dear to my heart. Yeah. Love it. Love it 100%. So it looks like we're going to be learning a lot today. So Jonathan, this being the first time that you're here, I got to ask you the same question. I tend to ask everybody the first time that they're here. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, what have you. And, and I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common, chief among them. Occasionally we get dressed up. We might put on a mask and we think we're wearing a cape, but we're always going out there to use our special talents and skills and abilities to improve our customers' lives. Also, like superheroes, before Spider-Man was, you know, Spider-Man, he was just kind of Peter Parker doing his own thing, going to school, taking some photos. <laughs> Therefore, just like superheroes, entrepreneurs have a beginning. We have an origin story. Simply put, Jonathan, before all the downloads, before the shows, before freeing yourself, you know, from your own nine to five, we want to know who is Jonathan Rivera? Well, I am a crappy student, or I was a crappy student in school. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, much like Puny Parker, I didn't have much going for me. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, and really where the biggest change happened for me, because like I said, I, I was bad in school and I really didn't pay attention. I don't know if it was that I wasn't challenged or maybe I had some ADD or something. But one of the, the things that was a big, big turning point for me, and I realized the power that I actually have inside that superhero power mm -hmm. that we're talking about was I, I was, I had to be like 21 or 22. I was working as an electrician and I would wear these tools and I had, uh, all, I used to love to have all the tools. So like Batman, you know, Batman with his tool <laughs> belt and all the cool toys that do different things. Well, I love to have my tools and I had two kind of like saddlebags. I looked like a donkey carrying <laughs> right. all these tools around and it would weigh me down. And the problem was I weighed about a hundred and 30 pounds. Nice. So I was skinny, carrying about 50 pounds of tools. Nice. I was developing back problems, and I thought to myself, 
Jonathan, my my spider senses started kicking in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, you're too damn young for right. your back to be hurting and you have to do something about this. So what are you going to do about it? And I started looking online and reading about bodybuilding, about health, about nutrition. And I went on this two year kick where I went from 130 pounds, all puny, skinny and withered looking to 175 pounds of lean muscle. Wow. And that was where I realized that I had the power to change my life because I changed my body. Wow. That's dramatic. That Now, I can only... Do you have like a transformation picture somewhere? <laughs> because... Dude, I wish I did. I, w- I would love to see a picture of myself all emaciated, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, d- I can only imagine the flip book. This is like that superhero montage where they where he goes from realizing and then enjoying his power and you just flip and then the next scene or as they go through that transformation. That's amazing. So do uh, here's an odd question, but uh, you brought something up that I, I never really thought about. Do a lot of electricians have back problems or or was this simply because they, they were so small? They life problems, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Life is their problem. But my, my thing was I, I loved the – like I said, like Batman, I love the tool belt and the gadgets. I love to have the right tool for the job. So I probably carried around too many tools and I was too skinny. So it was Got just it. a combination of two. Had I kept that job, I'd probably be walking crooked by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. We don't always do what's best for us. But yet you managed, and this is an interesting question for me uh, to understand your answer to, you, you managed to do something most people failed to do. You you got to a point of not only realizing there's a problem, that's number one. A lot of people have trouble with that. But two, once they realize it, then they have to get to the point where they do something about it, which is really difficult for others. And then you actually follow through. So where does that courage come from to go, you know what? I've had enough. It's time for a change. So great question, Jay. And uh, awareness and then action, two steps that every person will need in building their cash flow. And I don't know about the courage. So I went through this little phase where I was getting all um and doing meditation and trying to be positive and there was nothing I hated and Mm. everything was like on on, on a real nice, (laughs) nice waveform. And that's just not me. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> oh, so there are things you hate then. Okay, good. I hated that job. Yeah. I hated working for the man. I hated getting up. And get this, I hated getting up in the morning at five or six, whatever time I got up to drive to work for an hour and sit in traffic. I hated the tiny paychecks. I hated my life. And that was where it started was I hated the way I looked. And you know what? That hate drove me to make some changes in my life. So I don't know if it's power or I'm just driven by hate. Now I sound like a super villain. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hear you. I hear you. But at the same time, for many entrepreneurs, I think many businesses are born out of frustration. For sure. And you just happen to be, this is how your frustration came about. But you, you've got to help me with something. How do we go from electrician to podcasting like at what point does that become the hey i know this is what i'll do all right so we didn't exactly make that jump one to the next it was actually the first thing so (laughs) (laughs) would have been interesting but i had to get some experience and so one of the things that i was obsessed with and since you're in real estate you probably know him But uh, I used to stay up at night and catch those late night infomercials with Carlton Sheets. (laughs) No money down. This just got interesting. Keep going. (laughs) So I I I used to see those and I'd be like, God, man, those people can do it. Why why can't I do it? And eventually, what was a big amount of money I I invested? It was like three hundred and fifty dollars for the kit that Carlton Sheets was selling, I, I plunked down the money and that was like a week's pay for me. And so it was difficult for me to do that. But I went ahead, I took the plunge and I did what every superhero does. I got it 
and I didn't open it up. I put it on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you looked at it really nice. Displayed it. It had its own display case. Got I rubbed it. it on my head and hoped that osmosis would take care of it. But yeah, that was two years that I let it sit. And then finally, I, I, I just got so fed up with work and had some big changes in my life. And I was just so frustrated. I couldn't live another day working as an electrician. So I dove into it and I quit my job. I, I looked online to see when the next uh, real estate license course was coming up. It's probably like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And I saw that it was coming up. Uh, a new class was starting a week from that day. I quit my job immediately, signed up for the real estate licensing course, got my license with the intention to buy real estate and hold it. Mm. And uh, so I did that for a while, bought some properties, got some rentals, started flipping properties and got rid of all my rentals because flipping was good. I lost my butt. Mm. I lost everything in the crash mm -hmm. and I rebuilt the business from the ground up to where I do have cash flow these days. I have plenty of cash flow, uh, I mean, compared to what I had back then. And it was all built on rentals and built on my hate for working that nine to five job that I was doing. Got it. Got it. OK. OK. But and there's something that you did there that I think is interesting that I want to dig into. You mentioned that you noticed that the the opportunity to to change the classes were coming up, um, you know, a week from the time that you actually looked at it. You didn't dip your toe into that water. You just burned the bridge and said, let's go. You have to do that, really, because the problem is when you have a safety net, then you tend to make more mistakes or you tend to fall back. And so, yeah, I, I, burnt the bridge. And I said, Hey, I hate my job anyways. <laughs> so I'm not going to come back here. It doesn't matter. I'll go to another company. It's easy for me to get work, but I got to do this and I got to just quit cold turkey. So it was no side thing. It was all in. And so I did that business for, I, I still have my real estate business. I still have my cash flow. I still have my rentals and we're even talking about expanding now. But from there, I got into the online world where I was doing pay-per-click ads for leads and then I started learning about social media. And then I got online and I got my first Mac. And on my Mac was this beautiful little application <laughs> called LodgeBand. And I'm like, hey, what's this? Right. And see, what you need to know about me is that in high school, I told you I, I, I was terrible, D student. But there was one shining light. And it was TV productions. All four <laughs> years, I got an A. So I was an AV geek. <laughs> nice. So when I saw the garage band and I'm like, oh, dude, I don't have to be on video. I can make content. I hate to write. I'm just going to do I hate. There's that hate again. Mm. I, I, I guess I'm motivated by hate. <laughs> there it is. It starts but out somewhere. I just got into podcasting back in 2009 as a way to create content because that's what we were supposed to do. And I had several years of just failing miserably with podcasting until 2013. I had my first big breakthrough, the Making Agents Rich show. And from there, I built the podcast factory where uh, I am today. Awesome. Awesome. But okay. So if I heard you correctly, it, it, it took about, I don't know, let's call it four or five years to be an overnight success. 10, 10. Excellent. <laughs> See a decade. I just wanted to make sure that everybody else heard that too, because oftentimes we start something and we go, how come I haven't made it yet whatever that means but we we often think we're the only ones everybody else makes it immediately but yet here you are saying it was 10 years to being an overnight success that's in real estate and then my online business that i started around 2008 2009 which is doing really great right now i can still remember like it's yesterday telling my friends and family uh any day now it's gonna happen i got three dollars in the bank oh uh, any day now oh shoot i'm withdrawn uh, overdrawn <laughs> any day now and so even that business i didn't have my first big hit I mean, I had a couple base hits along the way, but from 2008 to about 2013 was really rough times in the online business. Now, and I, so I've got to ask this because th this is not the first time this has happened, and I think there's something to it. So, I, it, it, you know, when you begin to see a pattern, it, it calls attention. We should pay attention, and hopefully, everyone else is hearing this too. There's been a number of real estate individuals, myself included, where we start out in real estate, we're doing our thing, we have some ups and downs, we eventually figure it out, but many of them, many of them, end up in some sort of marketing space. Why do you think that is for businesses in general? Well, 
if you started a business and you you're like me, you didn't have any experience, you didn't know all the stuff that you should have known, and so that's why your first business fails. Maybe your first couple businesses fail, as mine did. But marketing, and, and it just depends on how you're built, but marketing is really the, the lifeblood of your business because if you can figure out how to, A, generate leads, B, convert leads, then it seems like you can make any business work. And I think that's why we all end up, that's really oversimplifying business, but really, isn't it just you got to get leads, you got to find out where they are, you got to get them, and then you got to convert them to buying your product. So that translates into many different businesses, and that could be one of the reasons that people get into it. For me personally, I didn't know anything about marketing when I got into my own business, and boy, right. was it tough. It was so, so tough. But what really just woke me up was when I went to a, a seminar, and it was fortune builders. I think they're still around, right? Oh, Dan, Dan Merrill. Merrill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he had a system. I, I invested, I don't know, one, two grand. And he had a system in there. Uh, it was a spreadsheet. And it was like, okay, signs, calls, uh, yep. appointments, yep. closed deals. And that was the first time I ever saw marketing by the numbers. And what today I refer to as direct response marketing fits into marketing by the numbers. And I became obsessed with that. And it was just like, it's science. Making money is science. And all I need is this many leads, this many appointments, this, ma this many closed contracts to make this many dollars. And so I, that's how I became obsessed with it. I can't speak for everyone else. Well, I, I think the process is probably very, very similar because we're, we all don't know what we don't know. And we end up going through this process to end up, oh, I need more people to talk to. That's usually what it comes down to. And for I know for most real estate people, we we start with the operational stuff. Well, what tub do I need to buy? And where do I get the hammers and the nails? And how do I get yeah. the discount on the curtains? And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get past that. And once you get past that, you got to have, you know, uh, buyers, investors, and sellers to deal with. And in order to to get to that point, marketing comes into play. So, but I, because you, and you mentioned something that, that I think a lot of us also have in common because of the lack of say formal training in, in terms of business, you had to, we have to rely on other resources, other avenues. We'll call them just non-traditional avenues of, of how to gain our business experience and knowledge. And dare I say wisdom, what have you found to be some of the most effective ways for someone to, to shorten their learning curves? Well, the the biggest way that I've found, and look, this has been since I was a kid, all right? When I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I used to love to go to Staten Island. We lived in Brooklyn, and my uncle and aunt lived in Staten Island. We would go visit them on the weekends, and I couldn't put my finger on why I loved going over there to visit Uncle Al so much. And then I finally realized, when I thought back to it, Uncle Al used to make me his apprentice. Got it. And he used to say, hey, let's go fix this, and he would... Yeah, give me the tools and, and give me a job to do. And that influenced me and is the big driving factor to why I became an electrician. And when I was an electrician, same thing. They match you up with a journeyman and the journeyman teaches you what he knows and you put it into practice. So you learn, you take action, and then the knowledge becomes yours. And it's really just the idea of mentorship and having mentors and having someone who has been where you want to go or is five or 10 steps ahead of you and you being able to work alongside them and shortcut your success, that's going to be the biggest way. And that's really my biggest, that's how I became a success so damn quickly. I had so many great mentors. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, it, it, it's very, very true and very, very common. And yet it's one of those things that I think we tend to resist for, you know, for our own reasons now. But I have a question, though, because there's something that I think is different that you did pick up uh, by through the process of going through the the electrical trade. You mentioned that there was a journeyman who taught you everything that you know, and then you put it into practice. My question is the time span, how much time elapsed from you know, the, the journeyman showing you or teaching you, we'll call that theory to you actually practicing what you were just taught. We'll call that lab. What, what was the time process or how much time elapsed between those two things? 
So the thing is, it really depends on the individual. So I'm a driven individual. So as soon as they taught me something, I was trying to do it. And sometimes I didn't do it correctly, but I was putting it to use. I've also got this gift that you can tell me something today and I could totally not understand you. And for some reason, it sticks around in the back of my mind and I might see something one or two years later and boom, it fires off. And I'm like, oh, that's what that person meant. But for the most part, Learning alone without action, for me, is useless. So I have to take what I learn. And this is something that I learned from one of my mentors, guy that helped me turn my real estate business around. Because the thing is, Jay, my second go at the real estate business almost totally crashed and burned if I didn't have a mentor who smacked me in the back of the head and said, dude, stop playing around online. Stop fooling with all the social media stuff and take that knowledge you have and put it to use in your real estate business. And I was like, oh, crap. (laughs) Crap. Why didn't I think of that? You know, why am I not writing emails and putting up landing pages for my apartments? Duh. You know, but the the thing is, I I learned this idea of the 72 hours rule from my man, Darren Persinger. And what it is, is you go to a conference, you spend all weekend there. And you leave there motivated, but you wonder why you don't get anything done. You go to a webinar and you learn some cool stuff. You listen to this podcast, you learn something, and then three, four days later, you still haven't done anything. It's called the 72 hours rule. And the way it works is whatever information, whatever input, whatever stimulus you get right now, you must put it to use in the next 72 hours, or you may as well throw it away. Because what happens is, if you don't throw it away, then it becomes that monkey on your back, nipping at your ear, saying, you're not mm. using me, you're not using me. <laughs> so 72 hours rule, whatever you learn, put it into action in 72 hours. And for me, I'm an extremist, all right? I'm an extremist. I learned something. I want to put it to use in 24 hours, or else I want it out of my head. <laughs> yes, I had a feeling that some of that was there because I, I, I function very, very similarly in terms of the time span. And it has to be short because I, I don't feel like I've learned it unless unless I've actually begun to practice it. It's like it's a deeper level of learning in, in some way, shape or form. Now, in the process of working with the journeyman, do you ever get to like, hey, I tried this, but it didn't work and go back and get it reviewed? Or how does that I mean, how does that process actually work? We work side by side. So at at the time, we were pretty much attached at the hip. If we're running conduit, we're just both running conduit together. He's running one, I'm running the other, and we get to compare notes right as we go. So I can actually Ah. shift and adapt as I'm watching him and applying the knowledge. Got it. Got it. I think that I think that gave you an unfair or we'll call it, quote unquote, unfair advantage, at least into understanding how business works, because uh, I it, it allowed you and now I get it. It allowed you to make the the leaps forward ahead. So what would you say well, for those that maybe didn't have the opportunity to go through the electric uh, electrical trade? What would you say would be some of the other major benefits that you found from mentorship? Look, nobody gets there solo. You know this. I know this. Everybody knows it. But what are you doing about it? You know, I'm glad that you're listening to the podcast. That's as good. What else can you do? Ask yourself that question. What three things could I do to help myself be in the right circles, right network, around the right people that can help me get one step closer today to my goal? That's a simple question, but its answer can propel you forward faster than you might think. Give it a try. In the meantime, if you want some more ideas, Feel free to pick up a copy of my book, Cashflow Diary, 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy. Just go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. Again, that's cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. Put in your name and email. We'll send you a PDF copy. And for those of you who like to have the audio book, do the same thing and you get a nice little discount as well. Now, let's get back to Jonathan. So there's just too many to list in in (laughs) such a short show, but... The big thing, Jay, is really just having a proven roadmap for success. And a lot of us say we want it, but when it's put right in front of us, we don't jump on the opportunity. And so there's whoa, there's whoa, a couple whoa, whoa. things to that. Hold, hold on. Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean? We don't jump. We say we want it, but we don't jump on the opportunity. What does that mean? Right. So people want to know how to get cash flow. They listen to your show and then they don't do anything about it. Oh, well. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So right. then do you really want cash flow? No, it's just lip service. Right? And so that's the thing is taking the advantage that you get. And that's one of the reasons why I've always had luck with my mentors and they stick around is because they teach me something, I put it to use, and then I report back to them, yes, it worked, no, it didn't. Most of the time it works because if it didn't work, they wouldn't be sharing it with me. And so that's the thing. Learn and applied action. So you want to get the most benefit from being mentored. First of all, find somebody who's ahead of you. Second, do what they tell you to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Somebody was washing dishes. Their dog barked or their kid cried or something. So say that part again. Do what they tell you to do. Get the mentor. Do what they tell you to do. Then the most important part. Yes. Report back to them. Tell them your findings. They love to hear that their stuff is working. They love to hear twist on it because then they also grow. They see a new twist. They see a new angle. And it, it just strengthens what they're teaching. And it makes them want to share more with you. And that's really how I've gotten all my mentors. I call that the guru love potion. You go, you buy a product, <laughs> right? You, you take the product, you put it to work in your business, you report back to the guru, hey, this works so well. And they're like, all right, you're my poster boy. Come here, son. Right? <laughs> I want to share you with my audience. <laughs> you know, Jonathan, I thought I was going to be able to keep that secret to myself for quite some time. Oh, well, we just told everybody now they'll go and use it, I hope. Come on, Jay. 99% of you won't use it, and I don't mind. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. So, the, uh, but let's let's talk about this, because I know I get this question, and I'm sure you do as well. Um, what's the the best way you found for to, to approach someone that you want to be a mentor? Because I know I get inundated. Jay, will you mentor me? Will you mentor me? I don't even know how to respond to that email anymore, or that text message. It's just like... What? That's why we're producing a podcast. But mm. what? What? It, what? What's the best way to approach someone that you go, "Hey, maybe this gal, this this person, they they've been there. They they can help me." What? What's the best way that you found to to approach them and get them to actually want to help you? Let's talk about what not to do, Jay. <laughs> Let's start there. Okay. <laughs> so the best way not to get a mentor is to say. Hey, will you mentor me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not mentor you. Go away. <laughs> that that is a pretty effective way to not to to not succeed. You are correct. Yes, yes, that is a, a huge red flag that you're using the word. Will you mentor me? Those words don't work. What you have to do is just like I I laid out for you my little guru love potion recipe. There is. You have to learn from these people and whether they're speaking on a stage, you're listening to them on a podcast show, they're over at your local RIA, you, you listen to them, you take what they have taught you and you put it to use and you come back with some data for them, why it worked, why it didn't work, what you tried, at least showing that you have applied it and they will take an interest in that because if it didn't work, they're going to want to prove that it works and they're going to be like, well, maybe you should have tried this or you should have tried that. Boom. You're being mentored, aren't you? Right. And, and if it did work and you report back and they're like, that's awesome, you can then say, what else do you know? Oh, well, have you tried this or that? Boom. You're being mentored and you're not asking for it. You're in it. It's happening because you are taking action. And that's going to be the difference between getting a mentor and not getting one. Listen, don't ask to be mentored. Go out and do stuff. Show that you can do stuff and people will take an interest in you. And that's the best way to get people interested in you is by taking action and applying what you have learned from someone and sharing the results. It's really, there's no secret formula, Jay. I mean, we were keeping it to ourselves, okay. But really, at the end of the day, aren't you going to say, oh, yeah, if somebody's using your stuff, somebody just bought your product, even if it's a low-dollar product right. where it's just a book or something, they use something from your book, they got a result, and they shared it with you. That's yep. interesting. I'm going to pay attention to you. It's the fastest way to get the, their attention. My attention is to actually demonstrate that you – you you are already in the fight. You already taken the risk of at least trying something, <laughs> you know, because uh, there are many things that are in there that that don't cost anything but time and effort. And and if you're not willing to put forth the effort to try now, then why should I put forth any effort? I, right. I, I don't know. I don't know. So, right. but let me ask this question then: Do, Does your mentor in in the in your journey? 
Uh, does the mentor have to be someone you can physically touch and see and be local to you or no? Good grief. So when I was working in electrical, yeah, you had to be standing in the same lift together, 30 feet in the air, working on, this, on the right. same project. Right. And so that's one way. But my mentor, since I've been doing my online business, some of them I've worked with for years and have never met until recently like for instance Darren who I told you about I worked with Darren for a good four years no I, it was about three years before I met him because he came down to Florida and then a couple years later I went to his wedding with my wife and we went up to Seattle to see him but we had worked together already a couple years and never met each other there's other guys like Ben Settle who is known as the world leader in email marketing education. I worked with him for about three years and people swear that we're buddies when we're co-hosting uh, his entrepreneur show. And the fact was that I worked with him for three years and never laid eyes on him. And I only met him uh, probably two or three months ago. We built six-figure business together. We have helped each other a ton and we never ever met. So no, you don't have to meet people. Action speaks louder than anything else. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting sometimes, especially with today's technology. Uh, I, I don't even think there's a lack of willing people that, that someone could find that, that would mentor or, or, cause there's so much information today. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there, all of us, anybody who is out there as a leader, anybody who is out there doing things, we want to know that, first of all, we wouldn't be sharing the things that we share if we didn't believe in them, number one. Right. And second, we want to know that it's working for other people because if we were selfish, greedy pigs, we wouldn't be sharing that with you. So please, <laughs> you know, come back and let me know my stuff is working so I know that my work in the world, my legacy is being carried on. And that's really going to gonna just, we want that. So if you can give that to us, then you are likely to get mentored. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's funny that you mentioned the whole selfish, greedy pigs part because I, I Cashflow Diary started originally as a project to make sure that I had something to pass to my kids because I thought, you know, hey, if something happened to me, yeah, they might get real estate and they might get some businesses and whatnot. That's wonderful. But would they get the lessons? And then, then what happened is another friend said, hey, I bet you adults would want to know that too. <laughs> you know? No doubt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great idea. And it, and being willing to share it. But I have to ask you this question, Jonathan, because I get it and I'm sure you do. Well, if your stuff is so great, how come you share it? Why don't you just spend all this time doing it? You know, I really get that a ton. And I'm, I'm like, why wouldn't I share in my head? I'm like, why wouldn't I share it? Do you not realize how much opportunity there is? But yet, how would you answer that question? So I'm in strategic coach right now. And one of the things that we're working on is this Colby assessment. And it, it, oh, I love Colby. Yeah. So it gauges how you act when you're trying to achieve yep. and what your modalities are when you're trying to achieve. And for a person like me, where I do my best learning is by sharing. And so when I'm sitting here talking with you, Jay, and I'm sharing my stories, I'm getting clearer on what's important to me. And so that's why I have to share it because I'm, I'm doing it for me. I am selfish. <laughs> all right. I am selfish. Right. I'm doing this so I can get better at my game because no matter what I'm dropping here, I'm already elevating. So you're going to be still catching up. Yeah. All right. You're still going to be catching up. And the thing about it that's really cool is when other people take action, then you get to learn from them as well. And so it's a place of we're all growing. And I don't have, I love for all of us to be growing. I'm going to always try to beat you or beat you or beat you, but I don't <laughs> mind if we're all growing. <laughs> yes. Mean, that's, that's fine. Uh, and, and the other part is, and it's really one of the things that, that I'm figuring out at my work at the podcast factory. It, and just like you started cash flow diaries for something to, to leave to your kids. Um, it's really my legacy. It's really, this is going to live on. And so we talked in the beginning uh, where we talked about me co-hosting eight shows. And I co-host shows with people who I think are brilliant, people who I learn a lot from, people who have helped me a ton in my business. And I feel like it would be incredibly selfish of me to keep what I'm learning to myself. 
And what I do is I share it with the world through our podcast network. I let people in on these conversations that before may have been exclusive. Now we're able to share and you're all able to grow. And yeah, it is selfish because it's my legacy. It's what I created, but it's improving the world. Indeed. And it, it feels, it's just awesome to be a part of it. So let, let me ask you this, uh, Jonathan, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, if I, I asked you to explain to someone, you know, cause I, I have this challenge. What, what do you do? <laughs> well, <laughs> how, how do you describe it in, in such a way that they go, Oh, okay. I get that. Well, this came up today. <laughs> And of course. I was pissed, okay? <laughs> so we're sitting out on the porch, uh, Cupcake and I, that's my wife, and we, uh, let's see, a couple days from today will be two months that our son is home. So we did a, a three-year process to adopt our son. Wow. He's home with us now two years. Uh, Cupcake is on leave. She got leave from work. And I never really thought that it would happen like this, and it seemed like a dream, but She's off from work. We have our kid here and we're making enough money to take care of everything that we need. And so I told her, don't go back to work. I'm going to just, I'll put you nice. on a salary nice. and we'll, we'll work together and we'll grow this business because this is our second business. The real estate's the first business. Now we have this online business and I want her in on this with me. I want to grow it together. I want this to be part of our legacy together. And she goes to to FaceTime her mom because mom likes to see uh, the baby. We call him Dong. That's for another story. But she wants to see him and say hello to him and make sure that he knows grandma and they're FaceTiming. And she asked Cupcake, when are you going back to work? And Cupcake says, oh, I'm supposed to go back the 28th. And I look over at her and I said, you didn't tell him yet? She's like, no, no, I didn't tell him. I was like, Okay. She tells her mom, I, I think I might not be going back to work. And she's like, what are you, crazy? You got to go back to work. One of you has to have a job. What does Jonathan do anyways? Oh. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, you don't, oh, you don't know what I do? I don't know what I do. I don't know how to explain it, right? The only thing that I can tell you, and, and this is constant growth that I'm going through, is I'm an entrepreneur and I solve problems. I solve problems for my clients. And whatever those problems are, right now I'm solving the problem of how do you build your authority in only 20 minutes a week? How do you get your message out to more people? How do you make more sales? How do you build your legacy? All that stuff is working through podcasting. But if I look at the core of what I do and what I have always done is solve problems. Oh, you don't have a house. Well, I have this rental here. I'm solving the problem of you not having a house. And so you're solving the problem of me needing money for the house, right? So I'm in the problem solving business. Yep. Yep. That sounds about right. And I'm not sure my in-laws know what I do either, but that's so a whole. frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It does cut down on some of the conversations because they can't really ask me about it. So it, it, it's all good. Now, let me ask this because I know here's what I do know. I know there's been a number of people who have listened to you and I talking and they're like, wow, that sounds like fun. Whatever they do, I can't figure it out, but you know, it sounds like fun. And maybe they're slightly intrigued by podcasting. Maybe they think they, they actually want to give it a try or, or they just want to find out more about what you are up to. What's going to be the best way for them to, you know, track you down and stalk you? Yes. They I want, want to- you to forget about me. Okay. Forget about me 100%. And instead, I want you to focus on you. You be selfish, listener. You think about you and you think about how you would like to multiply your results. How by multiplying your results, you would have more freedom. You would have a better life. You would have more success and more money. And then I want to offer you a way to multiply your results by tapping you into the mentors who have helped me grow my business and multiply my results. Those are the guys over at the Podcast Factory. So here's the best thing for you guys and girls out there to do. Just go to thepodcastfactory.com forward slash app, A-P-P. And when you go to thepodcastfactory.com forward slash app, you can download the Podcast Factory app and you can have all my mentors 
thousands of minutes of mentorship all in your pocket available to you whenever you want. Thepodcastfactory.com forward slash app. Excellent. Just one interesting question. I'm assuming the Podcast Factory is environmentally friendly. <laughs> How, oh, yeah. We're, we're not putting any waste out there. We, we make sure that we're 100% efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. I just I had to ask with a name like Factory, you know, it, it brings up these questions. So uh, as we end here, I, I have one question that I think it's going to be interesting to hear you answer. So uh, for a moment, Jonathan, let's pretend that 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 someone who is listening they've listened this far and they're they're really going to they're going to take the, the challenge the 72 hours rule so here's what i'm going to say let's pretend they're standing in front of the superhero outfit store right now they're thinking about their cape they want to put on a mask they're not really sure that at the end of the day what they're saying is i want to be better i want to be more i want to build a bigger better better business i want to make that next step but you know, like I know, Jonathan, anytime that happens, anytime we want to step into the greatness that we were born to be, we often are confronted with that voice. And it's that voice that's in the back of our head that often isn't always supportive. And for some people, they're related to that voice and they don't really know. Yet, they know that this yearning won't go away. They know they want to move forward, but they're not sure how. And that voice is right there, constant companion. With all of that knowledge, Jonathan, that you've now gained, the wisdom, the insight, if someone was wanting to get started and make things happen, and you knew they were going to actually obey the 72 hours rule, or they were going to be the overachiever and do it in 24, you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that they were going to do exactly what you told them to do right now. What would you say? Say, uh... That voice in your head, I believe that's the amygdala, the the <laughs> lizard brain. Go get a lobotomy. <laughs> just, just go get that removed. No, but seriously, it, it's all about taking action, and that's all you have to do. And even if it's imperfect action, take small little steps because the small steps compound each day to give you the freedom to build that bigger, badder business that you're looking for. Nice and well said. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to, you know, invest here with us and, and, and share the message that, you know, mentorship matters. And most importantly, that giving us a way to access even more of it. Thank you. It was fun, Jay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? Well, today it likely means for you to go to the podcastfactory.com forward slash app and make something happen. You've got more stuff to listen to. Yes, there's more work involved in you becoming bigger, better, and badder, but that's okay. We all have to go do the work, and you can do it too. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>